A very good morning. You're watching Breakfast News on Rajya Sabha TV. I'm Tina Jha. These are the headlines we are tracking this Saturday morning. Green plays Paul Sport at inauguration of World Culture Festival being held in Delhi. Prime Minister Narendra Modi addresses event, calls it the Kumbh Mela of Culture. Fresh transgression by the PLA troops in Ladakh region. Chinese troops enter almost six kilometers into the Indian territory on the 8th of March. Retreat after eyeball to eyeball confrontation with the ITBP troops. Industrial output falls for a third month in a row, contracting 1.5% in January. Finance Minister stresses for India to keep the reforms momentum going. Mamata Banerjee releases TMC manifesto for the assembly polls, claims it has fulfilled all promises, promises to expose left Congress on holy alliance. And Pakistan cricket team to finally arrive in Kolkata for the World T20 tournament today, Mamata Banerjee gives written assurance to provide foolproof security. Well, the Lok Sabha passed the Aadhaar Bill 2016 as a money bill on Friday afternoon. The opposition alleged that the government was attempting to make the Rajya Sabha redundant through this process. Now, the Aadhaar Bill seeks to give legal sanctions to the Unique Identification Number Program or Aadhaar as a single window to distribute subsidy and other direct benefit transfers. The question is that the bill be passed. Those in favour may say aye. The Aadhaar Bill 2016 was passed in Lok Sabha on Friday. It was presented as a money bill prompting protests from the opposition. The bill seeks to give constitutional sanction to the Aadhaar number as a single window to distribute subsidy and other direct benefit transfers. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley said provisions had been made in the bill to ensure that personal data was not misused. Honourable predecessor speakers have taken a view that machinery is incidentally created. The principal purpose is the spending of the money and the targeting of that money in a particular manner. So it doesn't lose its character as a money bill. The passage of the bill would save 20,000 crore rupees by avoiding subsidies taken by the undeserving. However, despite the government's assurance, the opposition raised concerns over misuse of users' biometric data. Several MPs also demanded that the bill be sent to a standing committee. Only this card is not for identification, but it is also for other things. So many personal information you have to give. Yeah. So therefore, boy, what harm is there if you refer it to the standing committee? I oppose the Aadhaar bill. I do not suppo support the collection of such sensitive data from individuals of this nation. We are a multicultural, multilingual state. We have a plethora of cards that we can rely on. The government hopes this bill will help fight corruption. That's the reason it wants the bill to be passed quickly. Once a money bill is passed by Lok Sabha, the Rajya Sabha can only discuss it and not make any amendments. It also has to discuss the bill immediately. If not discussed within 14 days of being tabled in the upper house, a money bill is deemed passed. Pranav Goswami's report for Rajya Sabha TV. And Finance Minister Arun Jaitley has said that the need of the hour for India is to maintain its reforms push. Addressing the opening day of the three-day conference on advancing Asia, investing for future, Jaitley said that he is hopeful to get through some important measures over the next few months. The Prime Minister will address the conference today and so will IMF Chief Christine Lagarde. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will deliver a keynote address at the International Conference of Advancing Asia, Investing for the Future, being held in Delhi. The Centre and the International Monetary Fund is organising the three-day conference that started on Friday. Addressing the conference, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley said India needs to keep the reform momentum going. I think what the challenge before us uh, really is how to keep the reform momentum on, on one hand, take the best advantage of the areas where we are doing reasonably well, and then putting a large part of our national resource in areas where we are lacking. 
In the wake of some key bills, including the Real Estate Bill Clearing Parliament, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley hoped to get through some important measures over the next few months, riding on popular mood for growth-oriented policies. The IMF has been repeatedly mentioning, and you have on more than one occasion mentioned that uh, we are amongst the larger economies, the fastest growing one. Hopefully, year 2016 and 17, uh, we should continue to grow at a slightly more improved pace and re continue to retain that position. The IMF said earlier this month it expected India's economic growth rate to pick up to 7.5% in the 2016-17 fiscal year, aided by a collapse in oil prices and relatively low exposure to current global financial turbulence. We will have the opportunity to hear Prime Minister Modi and his views about India's role, very important role in the region and in the world. Apart from Lagarde and Arun Jaitley, RBI Governor Raghuram Rajan is also attending the event. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. An industrial output fell for the third consecutive month by contracting 1.5% in January in an indication that the manufacturing sector continues to struggle with sluggish demand and overcapacity. The higher than expected uh, decline was on account of the sharp degrowth in capital goods whose output shrank 20.4%. Consumer goods output growth was flat as well. IIP from April to January stood at 2.75%, whereas the December IIP was revised to negative 1.2%. 10 out of the 22 industry groups in the manufacturing sector recorded negative growth in January 2016 as compared to the same month last year. Shifting focus, the CBI that is under fire over its handling of the Vijay Malya issue has admitted that the notice seeking detention of the business issued by the agency was an inadvertent error. The CBI is facing flak after questions were raised on how the liquor baron was able to go abroad unhindered on the 2nd of March. The issue has triggered a political slugfest with the BJP and the Congress trading charges. It had changed the nature of lookout notice against Malya within one month of issuance from seeking his detention while leaving the country to that of merely providing information about his travel plans. The CBI said that Malia was not found during searches on the 10th of October 2015, after which the agency wrote to the Bureau of Immigration, saying it needs to be issued to ensure his availability for questioning in connection with the 900 crore loan default case involving the IDPI bank. Now, the agency claimed detention under the lookout circular was only possible on the strength of a known bailable warrant against an accused which was not the case with Vijay Malia. Meanwhile, the Enforcement Directorate has also ordered loans default of Vijay Malia to appear before it on the 18th of March. The matter also came up for discussion in Parliament yesterday. The BJP and Congress-led opposition parties exchanged barbs in and outside Parliament on the departure of liquor baron Vijay Malia. In Parliament, the Congress asked how Malia was allowed to leave the country even after creditors of Kingfisher Airlines appealed to the Supreme Court to ensure he stayed in the country. The Congress also demanded a response from Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Finance Minister Arun Jaitley. Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi and Finance Minister must answer to the nation. It must also be answered. Why was the lookout notice of CBI? First was which one was for detention of the person? Why was it toned down to only an information notice? Thirdly, when a specific information was received on 2nd of March from immigration authorities to CBI that he was leaving the country, why was no action taken? Malia is under pressure from banks to repay nearly 9,000 crore owed by his collapsed airline. In a series of tweets, he however refused claims that he fled India. All the public sector banks should order foreign thing or it to nail down how much money has been siphoned up by this corporate or the people who have taken loan so that the people's money can come back. Malia, who has called himself the king of good times, built his business around Kingfisher beer and co-owns a Formula One racing team. He told his Twitter followers that he travels to and from India frequently and that he was the target of a media witch hunt. The Janata Dal United also demanded that the government intervene in the matter. Sarkar sidhe tor par jimmedar hai. Passport kyon nahi jabt kiya gaya? Interpol ki madad kyon nahi li gayi? Kyon nahi red look 
जारी किया गया ताकि ता सारे हवाई अड्डों पर जांच हो सके Malia is a member of Parliament's upper house. He was last seen in the chamber on March 1st. So far he hasn't disclosed his current location in social media posts. He's believed to have flown to London on a Jet Airways flight on March 2nd. Bureau report Rajya Sabha Television. There has been a fresh transgression in the Ladakh sector. PTI is quoting sources in the security saying that Chinese PLA troops entered almost 6 kilometers deep inside the Indian territory near the Pangong Lake area this week leading to a standoff between security personnel of both sides. The incident occurred on the 8th of March when a platoon of at least 11 PLA men led by a colonel rank officer crossed over the imaginary line of actual control at Finger 8 Sirjop 1 area close to the Pangong Lake. The Chinese soldiers entered in four vehicles from across the Thakung border post of it Thakung border post of India and reached 5.5 kilometers deep inside the Indian territory. PTI sources also say the soldiers were soon countered and engaged by a patrol of the Indo-Tibetan border police and they were logged in eye to eye ball confrontation for a few hours after which the situation got diffused and the other side retreated. Now, according to reports the Chinese side was well equipped while the ITPP men were also carrying weapons and equipment for a long range patrol of the area. The situation along the banks of the 90 square kilometer Pangong Lake, two third of which is in China, has always remained volatile. Chinese troops are being intercepted by the Indian Army patrol several times after the three-week long standoff in the Depsang plains of Dolat Begoldi in May 2013. and pitching for deeper south south cooperation foreign secretary s j shankar said the development assistance to needy countries should not be judged according to orthodox parameters of donor recipient relationships making a wild attack on china he was delivering a lecture at a conference on the south south cooperation in delhi on friday j shankar also listed india's development projects in various countries including in africa he reiterated that we do not attach any conditionality and india has always been respectful of the sovereignty of partner nations he also highlighted south south cooperation as an important aspect of india's foreign policy and the three day world culture festival being organized by the out of living foundation commenced finally in new delhi last evening Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated the cultural extravaganza a number of dignitaries such as former French Prime Minister Dominic Willepin Nepal's Deputy Prime Minister Kamal Thapa and UAE's Culture Minister Al Nahyan were present on the occasion thousands of people gathered to witness the spectacle the first of its kind despite heavy rains before the start of the event <laughs> After days of being mired in controversy, the Art of Living Foundation's grand event, the World Cultural Festival, kicked off in Delhi Friday evening. Thousands of artists from across the world are participating in the three-day mega event, which was inaugurated by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The Prime Minister called it the Kumbh Mela of culture, as he spent about two hours there watching some spectacular music and dance performances. He congratulated Sri Sri Ravi Shankar for representing Indian culture on the world stage. Aaj ke paas wo sanskritik virasat hai wo sanskritik adhisthan hai jiski talas duniya ko hai hum duniya ki us avashyaktaon ko कुछ न कुछ मात्रा में किसी न किसी रूप में हम परिपूर्ण कर सकते हैं हमारी हर चीज की हम बुराई करते रहेंगे तो दुनिया हमारी ओर क्यों देखेगी ह्यूज क्राउड स्ट्रॉन्ग द वेन्यू ब्रेविंग हेवी रेन्स एंड हेल स्टोम व्हिच प्लेड स्पॉल स्पॉट एट द स्टार्ट ऑफ द इवेंट The audience was seen taking cover under chairs, tarpaulin sheets and flex boards on the open ground. But the show went on. Hundreds of holy men chanted in harmony and women dressed in red and gold danced to drum beats on the huge stage. We will perform to our uh, country and uh, 
in this time we are uh, visit the best festival in the world. As a result, all the arrangements are massive. I don't think any, I mean, uh, humility is possible to arrange better than this. The rain has spoiled the game, but it's, it's nobody's fault. More than 35,000 artists are said to be participating in the event, being attended by people from as many as 155 countries. The organizer, Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, described it as cultural Olympics. I welcome all of you who have come from far and wide, right from Argentina, Mongolia to Pakistan. We have more than 100 people from Pakistan here. Such lovely people, our neighbors from Nepal. And we are giving such a strong message in today's world when it is so much needed, when, when there is so much gap between communities, between nations, between ideologies, we give them one strong message. Look, we can coexist with our differences. The three-day extravaganza has been cloaked in controversy for days with the environmentalists alleging that the festival, spread over 1,000 acres on the Yamuna River's floodplains, has done irreversible damage to the delicate ecosystem. And with controversies dogging the event, several dignitaries, including President Pranam Mukherjee, pulled out of it. The event will continue till Sunday evening. A multi-layer security blanket has been thrown over the Yamuna floodplains with as many as 12,000 police officials being deployed. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, time for a short break here on Breakfast News, but news and updates will continue on the other side. Don't go anywhere. Thanks to the politicians like Nehru, who understood the importance of mathematics as an intellectual activity as well as for the economic development. They made important financial input into science. One of the quotations from Nehru, it's more or less what he said, I think, to some extent, that mathematics is the vehicle of exact scientific thought. Watch Eureka with Professor M.S. Narasimhan, eminent mathematician, only on Rajya Sabha TV. Thanks for staying with us on Breakfast News. Now, a parliamentary panel has favoured drastic reduction in the size of pictorial warnings on the tobacco products. The panel looking into the issue is understood to have favoured a reduction of such warnings to 50% from the proposed 85% saying it is too harsh. Ahead of the 1st April deadline for increasing pictorial warnings on cigarette and BD products from the present 40 to 85 percent, the panel members suggested that it should be 50 percent instead, as the proposed graphic warnings have the potential to severely affect Indian farmers as well as the companies. The panel is, uh, the panel is also learned to have suggested that there is a need to have a balanced approach as a massive display will result in flooding of illicit cigarettes in the country. Committee Chairman Dilip Gandhi was not available for comments. In the case of BD products, the panel is learned to have favoured pictorial graphic warnings of 50% display size on only one side of the product. The committee also favoured suggesting to the government to stress on education and education generation programmes that have been proved to be more effective and at the same time protect the livelihood of millions of tobacco workers. Well, the Jawaharlal Nehru University yesterday revoked the academic suspension of its Students' Union President Kanheya Kumar and seven others in connection with an alleged anti-national event in the campus. Now, the suspension was revoked after a high-level committee of the university probing the issue submitted its report to JNU authorities. The university, however, clarified that the students have not been given a clean sheet yet. The final decision will be taken after examination of the report by the Vice-Chancellor. The five-member panel was constituted a day after an event to protest the hanging of Afzal Guru on his third death anniversary was held. Anti-national slogans were allegedly raised during the protest. The eight students were also suspended on the 12th of February. On to news from the upcoming assembly elections. The Trinamool Congress has released its election manifesto for the upcoming elections in West Bengal. 
Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee has said that while the party has delivered in the promises it made in 2011, it will push for reforms further in the coming years. She also claimed that the people will see through the left Congress alliance that is only an alliance of opportunism, according to her. The Trinamul Congress released its manifesto for the upcoming assembly elections in Bengal. Party chief and West Bengal chief minister Mamata Banerjee said her government has fulfilled all promises made to the people in 2011. There are so many schemes. <laughs> Mamata also assured that the process of development will gain speed in the coming years. The 142-page manifesto contains chapters on industry, health education, minority development, along with sections focusing on regions like Jangal Mahal and the hills. Mamata also said that she will expose the unholy alliance of the Congress and the CPIM during her visit to Kerala. She charged the Congress with having sold their flag and themselves to the CPIM. Nirbachon and Age Tinomul Dole Abe Hangon Aro Tibrotek Tibrotor Hobe Ebong Ermote Amra Lukopulam Jemukomoti Momota Banaji Jekanejakane Shabaku the Gelen Uturbongi Obakulam Jekane Momota Banaji Age Gile Hajar Hajar Manuse Sotos put the Dol Lamto Art Shekane Momota Banaji Monte Baile Busatak the Hoi Kokon Lo Kazbe मानन सोई लोग इलोकी ना तार पड़े हम इस चीज़े उड़ बो मोमता बने जी रही दूरदर्शा बांग्लार मानुष निश्चय आगे देखें नहीं जेटा वर्तमाने पुत्तक को फोर्चेन। On the other hand, the Congress and the CPIM walked an extra mile to break the impasse over seat adjustments in the state after its leadership held a meeting last night. Congress State President Adi Ranjan Chaudhary said his party was sincere about a tie-up with the left but is ready for a three-cornered contest if such situation arise. The Congress says it is confident that the people of Bengal will give their mandate on what it calls is Mamata's misrule. Six-phase polling for the 294-seat assembly in Bengal will begin on 4th of April and last till May 5. Counting will take place on 19th of May. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And let's also take a look at some other election-related news. A three-day crucial meeting of the CPIM to discuss various poll strategies began in Kerala yesterday. One of their main concerns is whether or not to field Marxist veteran V.S. Achutanandan in the 16th May Assembly elections. The CPI will also hold its state executive and council meet in Kerala to finalise its candidate list, which is expected to be ready by the 20th of March. Union Minister Kiran Rijiju said yesterday that a BJP government in Assam and at the centre will benefit both the state as well as the northeast. He appealed to the people to give BJP a chance in the upcoming assembly elections in the state. Rijiju also dismissed allegations of the ongoing talks with the Ulfa being connected to the courts. Seat-sharing talks by Congress-led UDF in Kerala for the 16th, uh, 16th May Assembly polls with minor partner Kerala Congress J is said to have run into trouble. KCJ Chairman Johnny Nellore refused to attend further seat-sharing talks, alleging that his party had been insulted. He, however, said that his uh, party representative and minister for food and civil supplies, Anup Jacob, will represent the party in the talks. Party cadres were reportedly hurt when Congress did not fulfill their demand for four seats in the upcoming assembly elections. And on to some international news now. German officials confirm that three Paris attackers' names were listed in the leaked Islamic State files. Sami Amimor, Faud Ahmad Agar and Omar Ismail Mustafa had carried out the worst Islamic State attack at the Bataclan concert by Eagles of Death Metal in November 2015 killing at least 90 people. Now, the Islamic State files obtained by Germany, UK and the Syrian opposition media identified thousands of jihadist recruits from at least 40 countries. The details emerged after Abu Hamid, an IS defector, stole the highly confidential file and handed it over to Sky News. Germany's interior ministry said the information contained in the files could help to prosecute Islamic State fighters and also help prevent future recruitment. For all the other international updates, here's a quick world wrap.
U.S. Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump had to call off an election rally in Chicago yesterday on safety grounds after violent clashes broke out at the venue between Trump supporters and opponents. The supporters and the protesters waved flags and chanted slogans. The police forces were deployed to bring the situation under control. A shocking UN report revealed militias allied to the South Sudanese army have been allowed to rape women in lieu of wages while fighting rebels. Nearly 1,300 women were raped in 2015 in Unity State alone. However, the Sudanese government denied the UN allegations. An investigation is currently on. Syria's main opposition group will attend the peace talks in Geneva on Monday. However, they accused Assad of violating the ceasefire to gain upper hand during the peace talks. Meanwhile, a wave of anti-government protests are taking place in Syria against Bashar al-Assad. Progressive rock legend Keith Emerson died on Friday at the age of 71. Police officials confirmed that he died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound to his head. His death is currently being investigated as a suicide case. Emerson was considered as one of the top keyboard players of the progressive rock era. And heading to some sports news now. After much hue and cry, the Pakistani team is finally coming to India to participate in the ICC World T20 tournament. The team is coming to India via Dubai and is expected to land in Kolkata later in the evening today. Pakistan's Interior Ministry has cleared the national men's and women's teams to travel to India for the World T20 tournament. The decision came after the government received letters from the West Bengal State Government and the Kolkata Police Commissioner Rajiv Kumar assuring special security measures for the Pakistani team while in Kolkata. Now, due to the delay in travel clearance, Pakistan's first warm-up match against Bengal has been cancelled, but the team will take on Sri Lanka on Sunday in its second practice game. Pakistan will play their match against India on the 19th of March. जब 99 में हम इंडिया गए थे तो इससे भी गालिबन बुरे हालात थे प्रॉब्लम्स थी लेकिन पाकिस्तान टीम ने जाके बहुत बेहतर परफॉर्म किया पाकिस्तान टेस्ट सीरीज भी जीती वहां पे तो आई थिंक हम लोग कोशिश अपनी पूरी करेंगे जहां तक नेगेटिव की बात करना आई थिंक हमें उठाना पड़ेगा पिकअप करने पर ईच इंडिविजुअल को पाकिस्तान टीम को पूरी को उठाना पड़ेगा तो आई थिंक हम पॉजिटिव फ्रेम ऑफ माइंड से यहां से जाएंगे और कोशिश करेंगे कि बेहतर रिजल्ट्स आए and in, in some other news from the ongoing T20 tournament, Netherlands and Ireland have crashed out of the ICC World T20 tournament after rains forced their respective matches in Dharamshala to be abandoned on Friday. It was a heartbreak for both Netherlands and Ireland as it was a must-win match for both teams. Not a single ball was bowled in Netherlands versus Oman's match due to heavy rains. The second match between Ireland and Bangladesh also witnessed the delay start because of rains. Winning the toss, Ireland chose to field first in a game reduced to 12 overs aside. Opener Tamim Iqbal's 47 provided good entertainment to the sparse crowd that had stayed on patiently as Bangladesh were 94 for two after eight overs when the rain stopped play for one final time. Ireland so far managed to collect one point from two matches, while Bangladesh and Oman have three points each in the points table. Friday's no result meant that whoever wins the match between Bangladesh and Oman on the 13th of March will qualify from Group A for the main round that is Super 10. Only one team each from Group A and Group B will make it to the main tournament. Afghanistan will take on Zimbabwe today, where the winner will make the Super 10s, while Hong Kong meets Scotland in the other Group B match. India too will take on South Africa in a warm-up match at the Wan Kerry Stadium today in Mumbai. What a sight that is, that white ball into the sky. And for some more sports stories, here's the sports beat. India's campaign at the All India Bad All England Badminton Championships came to a disappointing end with Saina Nehwal, B. Sai Praneet, K. Shri, uh, Shrikant and Samir Verma all bowing out of the tournament. The London Olympics bronze medalist son, uh, Saina was stunned by Tai Zhu Zing of Chinese Taipei 15-21, 16-21 in the quarterfinals of the women's singles event to draw curtains to India's campaign at the tournament. Earlier, Praneet lost to his opponent from Denmark in a three-seater. The highest-ranked Indian Srikant was no match for fourth seed Kento Momota of Japan as he lost 10-21, 13-21 in a lopsided match. Samir Varma also lost to an eight-seed Tian Howie of China in a three-setter. 
PV Sindhu and women's doubles team of Jwala Gutta and Ashwini Ponappa had made an exit earlier in the opening rounds. Former French Minister for Health and Sports Rosaline Bachelot has accused Spanish tennis player Rafael Nadal of doping without providing any evidence. Bachelot accused the player on the basis of his absence for months in 2012 due to a knee injury. The former minister explained that when tennis players stop competing for several months, they have tested positive for banned drugs, noting that these cases are not regular but very often. According to anti-doping officials, more than 60 athletes, including Olympic medalists and world champions, have tested positive this year for meldonium, the performance-enhancing drug that Maria Sharapova admitted to using. The drug, which is for the heart patients, AIDS blood flow was placed on the World Anti-Doping Agency's banned list this year after being monitored by the agency in 2015. And that's it from us in this bulletin. Thanks for your time.